capitalism is a problem, but we are a human at the end of the day. I think a lot of times we forget that when we make this full transition into spirituality, we're like, you know, rage against the machine, right? <laughs> but it's like, yo, you got bills to pay. You know, I do have to address, granted, I am privileged. I am a light-skinned Latina. I am white passing Latina, right? So I, I can, you know, say with humility that I do kind of have an advantage, right, when it comes to anti-Blackness and racism, you know, in the collective. So I can speak from that privilege. I'm very aware of that privilege. And so I just want to, you know, <laughs> share that with the collective. Um, but also, it's really important, like you said, culturally, especially as Latinx or Latin communities, um, you know, we're taught, don't ask for more. Growing up, I was told by my elders, my family, don't push it. Don't ask for more. Don't go for that raise. Be happy with what you've got. So I was supposed to be happy with the bare minimum simply because I was taking up space, possibly having a seat at the table, but uh, through tokenism, right? So I should be happy just for that alone. Um, so that was really hard for me personally to work through when I was decolonizing my mindset and working through shame, guilt, and poverty mindset that you know, women and women of color, people of color are really facing on a daily basis, whether you're a spiritualist or whether you're an executive assistant, whether you're the janitor, whether you're working in facilities, you know, you know, it, it kind of it's interesting in the spiritual community, too, is that there's like this, this over push of like, you should just be grateful, be grateful mm -hmm. for everything, be grateful for the mm -hmm. now. And like, like in my family, even though I'm, I'm white and grew mm -hmm. up privilege my dad uh you know he was a factory worker and we grew up on food stamps and things like that and mm, uh mm. and so you know to to him it was like if he had like something stable or good that should be it you know I remember like uh one of the one of my sisters wanted to go to college and I was little and all my sisters are older than me and he was like he was like floored that she wouldn't keep her job that she had um at that time and being uh, like promoted to like a manager position it was only at like mcdonald's or maybe i was like in first or second grade or something like that and i remember being like why wouldn't you want her to go and do something we all find some way to resonate in community with these obstacles we face through systemic oppression societal con you know the societal conditioning and the societal constructs of um you know living in such a very cis hetero male you know, uh, culture, society in the United States of America, um, possibly even globally, right? We're healing that toxic masculinity. But back on the topic of guilt and how that relates to today, I love you brought up, uh, sorry, gratitude and guilt, excuse me. I love that you brought up gratitude because yes, I'm so grateful every damn day of my life, right? Mm -hmm. We all are. But if we try and mask um, our lows with gratitude, we have to sit back and, and realize like, oh, I'm spiritually bypassing because you know what? If I'm sitting here and I'm saying, well, I'm doing collective work, I'm being of service to my community um, and you know, I'm barely making a living. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button, the red one, you know, the one, just press it, little like. All right, enjoy the rest of this content. You got to take into account your livelihood. You're doing yourself a disservice, right? You're spiritually bypassing yourself. And in turn, what are we doing when we're doing this work? We're leading other people. So we're kind of, you know, through our own traumas, uh, perpetuating the same trauma back onto our community saying, be happy with what you got. You should be of service, you know, do low price points. Listen, I know our communities of color can't afford $500 sessions that, you know, we see our white spiritualists and our new age communities price pointing at. That's great, but we got to get to that point. So I am yep. all about, you know, price pointing at a very reasonable uh, price point for our community, offering sliding scales, doing payment plans. At the end of the day, if, you know, we're not pricing our value and all the energy we're putting in as practitioners and spiritualists, um, we're doing ourselves a disservice and our community a disservice. So that's why I wanted to talk about releasing guilt and shame. It's so important that we start addressing this because it's like this unspoken thing in the community. Yeah. And, and that is that, that level of also, I think that, you know, I mean, maybe this goes back so many, you know, generations beyond generations, but mm. the spiritual workers, the people that were, that everything that was to help or aid or assist 
communities. It was all done like either in a nonprofit or through religious outlets mm -hmm. like the churches or the synagogues and the temples or whatnot. And in all of that, it was it was meant to be like you devote your life to mm -hmm. give, give, give and you don't take. And it's almost these vows of poverty. And it's mm -hmm. like the less that you need, it's like almost like you are more spiritual if you need less. Mm hmm. Right. Mm. Do you, do you, mm. find that, you know, and so mm. people feel like this sense of guilt of like, you know, and I catch myself sometimes too. I'm like, oh, well, you know, like I should just do more. I should give more. I should have, you know, like a be, you know, but at, at a certain level, like you said, it perpetuates it. And even if like, let's say if we're talking about spirituality, even if somebody uh -huh. wants to live a life of spirituality and service, mm -hmm. you need money to go and really. <laughs> like dive in and do you want to take, do you want to go on a, on a trip and, and meditate for 40 days? You need money to do that. Do you want to, mm -hmm. you know, go and do this? Do you, the more money you make, the more you can give and, 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 and yeah. from an abundant overflowing cup space, not in this limited scarcity, holding all the pentacles, you know, type of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think also just speaking from my perspective as a Latina in our Latinx community, you know, colonized religion. <laughs> I talk about this all the time. And I know folks are just like jazz, you know, Essa, like, give it a break. I can't give it a break because religion, you know, colonized religion, Catholicism, Christianity, um, has done a lot of harm to our community, um, done a lot of harm to yeah. women, um, you know, our LGBTQ community. Right. And so through colonized religion, again, that another form of oppressing us was with that poverty mindset of being of service. Right. And if you're going to devote your life to religion or spirituality, um, you know, get rid of the matrix. Listen, I, I know I know capitalism is a problem, but we are a human at the end of the day. I think a lot of times we forget that when we make this full transition into spirituality, we're like, you know, rage against the machine, right? <laughs> but it's like, yo, you got bills to pay. If you like this content, make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment below. And we also have amazing link right there for some cool product. I know you want to check it out. I know you want to click it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on. You can do it. All right. Until next time, have a beautiful, blessed day.